coffee. Yeah, a cup of coffee there. A cup of coffee in the can. Mm -hmm. Right, I know. I'm one of those people that's double fisted in the mornings. I have coffee going one way and Diet Coke going the other. I need all the caffeine I can get. Well, other than the names right there, people are thinking, who are you, though, lady? But as you can see, <laughs> Uh, welcome to Who Tennessee Valley this morning. I am Jill Palo. This is my wife, Kim. Uh, we are celebrating a <laughs> and middle. I am privileged. We are celebrating a middle of the week Wednesday. We hump are. day. What day? What day? What day it is? And uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> but a song this in is there the somewhere. day that is before the most important day of the year for me. All right. It's going to be your birthday. My birthday is tomorrow. That's right. I forgot. See? I am so sorry. I forgot about that. Well, I, I don't think so because <laughs> I saw the keys to my present in the garage. <laughs> no, I wish. Um, but yeah, I got a birthday tomorrow. I know. I see. And last time I had, I had Tom to come on and to do all of that, but I, I wasn't even thinking when I scheduled this time. Yeah. So. You Tom know, even asked. He did. The last time even, he was here, we're going to do a special know, show for Joe. I know. We're, we'll have to do it the week after. I mean, you celebrate all month long. I anyway. know, Kim, but I mean, gosh. I I'm mean, sorry. Gosh. I'm sorry, Joe. I, wow. I'm doing for you what you wow. did for me on my birthday. Kim, now please. Your birthday, we had a big shing dig. <laughs> we did. We did. Uh, out Joe there did. In I, Birchwood, did we had that. a big, big. <laughs> we invited everybody in Birchwood. It was exciting. <laughs> Those of you in Birchwood, you remember. Um, but she did make me a, a homemade card. That's one thing about Joe. He's very creative like that, and he did make me a card. I made her a homemade card. I did. Didn't use crayons. Didn't use crayons. But I made a nice card with a nice saying inside. Yes, you did. And so I'm sure I he Googled something or didn't something. Didn't Google it, anyway. although I could now with my new Google lady. <laughs> I know. He's got the new Google lady on she his She will phone. tell you anything. <laughs> I asked her what was the state tree in Minnesota, and she gave me the scientific name. I can't even pronounce it. I Anything know. here. All right. A couple things I want to get to before we do our show. First of all, most important thing, Miami Dolphins won Sunday. Yes, beat the New did. York Jets. They are now right Handling. in the mix of the, uh, mix of the, the playoff race. We'll find out in the next couple of weeks, but they're in there. and I'm excited about that. We beat the Jets, the hated Jets. We don't like the Jets. Uh, so that was very exciting. And kind of, I wish it happened in reverse, but would have been the icing on the cake if the thing that happened Saturday would have happened Sunday or, or today. But, you know, we are huge uh, Dolphin fans, as you know, and because of that, we're a huge uh, anti-Nick Saban fan because he was our coach for a year, swore he wasn't going to leave, and then he takes a flight in the middle of the night to Alabama, and the rest is history. He's coach over there. So we were, as many Dolphin fans are, waiting for Alabama to lose, and Saturday, those of you that mi missed it, or those of you that did see it, we had the opportunity to see the greatest <laughs> game in football history. I mean, even high if school, we, college, okay. pro, it didn't matter. Even, even if we didn't have anything against Nick exactly, Saban, and if, exactly. even if we, you know, if you were pulling for Auburn, that was possibly, uh, but even if you don't have, if you weren't a fan of either team, you just watched the ball game, that's one of the best games. I mean, the score, it Ever. was a high scoring game, it went back and forth between. The two, I mean, it was just an excellent game all the way until the very end. And I mean, and people are, I mean, it's Wednesday and we're still talking yeah, and about it. People are in, in shock uh, over it after the fact. Well, it was just such a, uh, just a, the, it, just such an exciting and dramatic ending. It's the, it's the, it's the reason why you, you watch, watch sports. Football. That's right. It, and, was, and, it was. In fact, uh, uh, some guys on ESPN were talking about it and they said, you know, when you watch football or you watch any sport, if you've watched it for any length of time, you watch it because you love the game, but you also are waiting to hopefully see something you have never seen before in that game. And that's what happened Saturday when Auburn ran the, you know, and those of you that missed it real quick, Alabama, there was a second left in the game, really wasn't, but they no, pushed for right, it. They, they get the second. So they thought, you know, it's a tie game. We're going to go in overtime. We've got a second. Let's just try a field goal. 57-yard field goal the young man was going to attempt. So Nick Saban sends his field goal team out there, not thinking what might happen after the fact. Uh, the kid kicks the field goal. It's short. And right at the last minute, the coach for Auburn decided to put Chris Davis, I believe his name was, in, in, the, end in the end zone. Right. And you can just see in case. it, right, just in case. And it was late that he even went, that he put somebody deep. And the, the ball is kicked. It's short of the, goal, of, the, of the goal post. The young man, Davis, catches it in the end zone, decides to run an outlet to see what happens. <laughs> and even the announcer is, well, he's taking it out of the end zone. He's at the 10. He's at the 20. He's at the 30. And he broke it for a touchdown, which ended the game. They won the game. No time on the clock. 
Uh, everybody was in shock. They showed you the stands. There were Alabama peepers. I felt sorry for the little kid, but that's what you get for being Alabama. Well, that's what they said. That, no, they, well. And I know like, Jason Hildebrand, my friend, was crying as well. Well, a lot of people were, and they, and also uh, has been circulating on the internet and on Facebook how the fans and everybody are treating that kicker. You know, that he's they got have, death threats. Yes, that it's unbelievable the way Come that on. he's been been treated. And I mean, he was. And that's just from Coach Saban. Right. right. Well, Saban should. I mean, they had made and and it was a different field goal kicker yes. than the one. It was the that one that kicks it a little longer. Longer, but the the other one had missed. It, it was just a, anyway. You guys. It was a fiasco of a game, but it's a yeah. I, it was exciting. If you get a chance to see it in a replay or anything about it, go on YouTube. Just dial that in, and they'll, you'll. There's videos of people that were videoing each other watching the game, and right as it happened, it's just unbelievable. But a lot of sport talk I mean, now we, about it. We did because I thought when he kicked it, I thought it was good. I thought you a know, lot of people I, did. It looked like it was going to be good, and it in. was. It was just short. And then when I, you know, because I was well, you know, and and then that, and then when he was running at when he it was short and he caught it. And then he started running, and then you thought, well, he's getting ready to get tackled. And then all of a sudden, you're just kind of standing up, standing up. I mean, and then we kept were thinking, like, don't step out we of were, bounds. I know. I did. kept thinking he was going to step out of bounds because he was right there. I mean, and we were jumping up, screaming and I, yelling. I, and, I think I mean, in that particular, at that moment, all across, anybody watching the game, right. I think a lot of people were, not in vain, but were saying the Lord's name, God, oh my God, oh my. even the announcer for Auburn. It was like, it was the most unbelievable finish. And again, you didn't even have to be a fan of either team just watching it. And, and, but, but in the scheme of things, being, you know, a, a Saban hater because of what happened, right. I have to say, I have a lot of friends that are Alabama fans, and I feel for them. Cheryl Dunson of Santec, Jason Hildebrand, my buddy, of course, his wife, Emily Beatty of, of Pioneer, uh, Heath Ware, who's a coach at Cleveland High School, is a big Alabama fan. Uh, there's so many people that we know, and I can make a and list. And there's some Auburn fans that out, there are out Auburn there, fans, too, yes. right, that were out there. Of course, there. they're on the good side, so oh, yeah. you, you pat them on the back. But the Alabama fan, it's like, whoa, that was that was. A I game. know, and the, and the things that are going around, I mean, because they fought about that second because the, the clock had run out and the game was going to go into overtime, and it was like, no, they reviewed the clock and the play, I mean, a million times. So they came back and put one second on the board, you know, and all that. So out there, it, they're all like asking Alabama fans, you got a second? <laughs> See, so a lot of little things, you know, people, and, and people are heartless when it comes to it. When it comes to sports, it's like sports and war, you know, and is the way it is. They're, you're heartless. There's no rules. It's just, you know. Now, we tend to not do that because, because we know karma, karma is a you-know-what. Well, yeah, it'll come get you. Joe, let's get off that for just a minute. God, I can't. I can't. I can't. I Go know. Ahead. It's Wednesday, and I know you guys can't, you've ever seen it or you're tired of hearing about it. It is Wednesday. Shut up about the game, I mean, already. So, but I do want to tell you guys that this is the big weekend. I know. This is the big weekend I'm in town. Huge. And so, the, um, the community uh, Christmas tree lighting is this mm -hmm. Friday at 6 o'clock. It's downtown um, there in, on, the, on the, the courthouse square right there. And if you want to be there for that. And then after that, there's going to be uh, reverse caroling, which is a lot of fun because instead of the carolers coming to your house, you go and listen to them. That's not how it works. It is. And you get, there's... Um, there's uh, choirs in the downtown churches, and then there's other areas that singing groups are going to be together that you can go. You don't have to do the whole tour if you don't want to. If you just want to go hear a couple or get inside to hear a couple, you're welcome to do that. And then on Saturday night um, at 6 o'clock, we're going to start with the parade, Joe. The parade, we will be broadcasting it live for those As of you that usual. don't want to get out there and fight the, the crowd and find a place to park in to get down there. We will be broadcasting that parade live, um, and it's going to be a great exciting time but if you got kids you want to get out there yeah. and bundle them all up and let them go and uh and welcome in santa claus in the christmas season it's always a lot of fun and of course you know i think cleveland is uh, i think we've got one of the largest we do parades, we, we have for a few like, uh, past float years. and light lighted parades that um you know that there is in the state of tennessee and we'd be remiss we if be we didn't proud. mention all the hard work that, that sharon Mar, Mar, executive director of main street and all our volunteers all go the through, volunteers i mean karen kelly together. a bunch of them that is that is a zoo. All I can tell you guys is that if you have not ever participated in, in the parade, ever, all the stuff goes on over at Bradley Central High School parking lot out there next to the cafeteria. 
and to get everybody in their slot and lined up and, she and all the animals and the children and the motorcycles and the ho I, just to get everything in order and then for it to flow out of there and to get down on that that main drag that they're coming up on um, Inman Street they're going to come up Inman Street and then come down uh, Okoy and then go around the broad, Monument Center and go back up to Broad and then back up that way and so it, it it is a hoot and it is a zoo and so they they work very very hard but after December the 7th for Sharon that's when she goes <laughs> yeah there's a time to rest <laughs> that's a time to rest because she's had the block party she's had all of these uh, the events of Friday night and Saturday all everything downtown and I think even the the antique shows are over it, it's all done for the year and well, she can she can take a break we will have it live at six o'clock Saturday it'll yes. replay many times throughout the month but six o'clock it won't get to our we're usually in the bandstand so come by and say hey uh, and uh, talk to us there if you're around that area. But the bandstand, it'll get to our vantage point about 6.20, 6.30. Right. And then, of course, it makes its way around. And it's a lot of fun. A lot of people show up. And, of course, we, like I say, we'll air it m many, many times. And we have great sponsors that help put it on. Um, and I also want to thank, of course, in advance, my buddy Scott Webb, who helps put all this together. We've been doing it for now. Uh, well, the parade, we've been putting it on the air since, I think, 2000, 99 or 2000. So we're talking 13, 14 years. So uh, it's going to be another fun event. Um, also, along with that, I had something else in my head I was going to talk about, along with the uh, Christmas parade, but see, now it, it, it escapes it's me. It's just gone. It's, uh, um, oh, 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 I know what I was going to say. And we do want to, well, when Ron comes out, we'll talk a little bit more about this as well, but we want to say kudos, congratulations on a great season for Cleveland, Cleveland High School Blue Raiders. Uh, Coach Ron Crawford and the Blue Raiders had a wonderful year at the had beginning a great of the season. year. Nobody would have thought that they would have made it to the semifinals, the game before the state championship game. Uh, but he got them on track. It seemed to happen, we talked about, right about second half of the Bradley game. Something clicked. And from that point on, the rest of the season, Cleveland was just up here. Uh, they played a very powerful Knox West team uh, last Friday night. Uh, and again, the semifinal round four, they lost. But uh, many teams, there was four teams as of last Friday, and there are hundreds of teams in the state that would love to have been that one of those four teams that like Cleveland got to Absolutely. be uh, in that semifinal round. So congratulations to Coach Ron Crawford and the Blue Raiders. Hopefully uh, big expectations for next year as well. But we've got a great show for you today. We've got Tracy Shellhouse mm -hmm. from the uh, Christ New Cleveland Hope. New Hope Pregnancy Care Center. Care Center. Got that right. There you go. Uh, Ron Moore is in the house as always right. with some history. We'll talk about that game and some other stuff. And then we have Jimmy Kilgore. James Kilmore is here that he is going to tell us a little bit about his paper, but he's also bringing Stephen Poteet that has the Spirit Horses. It's an equestrian program, therapeutic program for people with special needs, all kinds. Well, it could be just uh, uh, from mental retardation to autism to uh, physical impairment um, to just um, to anger management issues. So um, there's a great program out there, and so Stephen will be um, with James talking about the Spirit Horse program that he has. All right. So that's coming up here as we continue on with Tennessee Valley this morning. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday. We will be back in just a moment. Town Americana, where trucks are big and bold, and a handshake is firm, and your word is gold. Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens is a $2,000 drive. Maybe you're coming from here or here. Doesn't matter. Buying a truck from Don Ledford in Athens will save you at least two thousand bucks. Don Ledford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens, a two thousand dollar drive worth making. I'll take that drive every time. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at two two six zero Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. 
Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. Are you having trouble filing for disability? Seems no one is concerned about your pain, the waiting, the denials. While some representatives will meet with you in court, we will meet with you now to discuss your plan. We'll review with you the same file that the judges will see. Call us now, Social Security Law Center at Logan Thompson. You're entitled to better. This segment of Tennessee Valley This Morning is brought to you by Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland and 2120 Chapman Road, Chattanooga. For your next new or previously owned vehicle, make it Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, the better way to buy. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning on WTMB. As you can see, we are now joined by Tracy Shellhouse. And we'll get this out of the way. Of course, we didn't know that you know, Tracy's also in Alabama. <laughs> We've fan. just rubbed salt <laughs> in her we just, I mean, not even realizing. <laughs> morning and I'm pouring so it sorry. in there. I mean, I mean when it rains, it pours salt. I know, is... but we, we, we're <laughs> sorry about sorry. it. We, we hate that. We hate that. But if somebody for hates you. it, right. we do hate it for you personally. Yes. But, uh, I know y'all don't hate it for you. You no. made that abundantly clear. But well, I, know, well, I, I mean. You know, <laughs> I, and remember, he did also say, I'm not going to Texas. That's but right. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, he told know. us that same thing. That's so. right. He told us the same thing, so I, I bet you he's in Texas. Next but, year. but. I'm <laughs> hoping not, but uh, I have a cousin that lives in Austin. Oh, oh. so he's yeah. probably he excited. his wife. You know, you hear the rumors. Right. But uh, I have a cousin in Austin saying that. Um, that his wife had been spotted out there looking at real estate. Uh, but you know, rumor, people like the rumor mills and they sort of get stuff going. He's notorious for that though. Yeah. I mean, he's notorious. He, he told LSU he wasn't going mm -hmm. to Miami, you know. I mean, well, he, coaches do that. And I hate to say right. it, but uh, it wouldn't be the first time. And I, I would love to have Saban for years, but you remember Franchani said, I'm not going anywhere. I know. Man. <laughs> well, a lot of them do that. And, and in fairness to him, that. a lot of coaches do yes, that yes. for obvious reasons. Right. I mean, yes. you're not going to say, well, you know what? I am. I'm leaving. I'm leaving uh, but y'all play your heart out yeah, yeah for me yeah so Let's talk well you about can look this. at a kiffin exit and right. how that went you know yes. what coach wants that so. right yes, there you go exactly <laughs> right but but karma on him came back on him as well yes, it did. So, so anyway all right all right tracy tell so us let's talk about the important that's right stuff. <laughs> I know we're all talking about. I'm like, we've got to shut up about this football game. <laughs> oh, I know, but it, it's hard. It, it is was. Hard. It was one of those. Things. Yeah, and I'm still recovering from it. I think that's why I'm feeling so down this week. Um, no, things are going great. As a matter of fact, um, we just recently had a new salvation in the office um, oh, yeah. of one of our clients that's been coming wow. in, and so another great way to wrap up the year, right. which is what we're doing. We're wrapping up our calendar year. Our fiscal year runs June to July, but okay. we have started our annual appeal. And our annual appeal is just simply where we reach out to those that have uh, proven their support for New Hope, that we know have a heart for us and ask them would they consider putting us in their year-end giving. And uh, we actually did not get that mailed until it went in a bulk mail after Thanksgiving. Oh. And already um, about $2,000 has come oh, through. Wow. And, and wow. it's just, it's just a, a, a Christmas card and a thank you. And uh, so terrific. we're really excited about that. Anybody that's not on that list that's interested in giving can get in touch with us at the office and we'll um, be able to they'll, facilitate they'll that. Your, Absolutely. <laughs> you can go to our website and just hit the partner with us button. And from there, you can choose to do it through um, your checking account, a savings account, uh, a debit card or a uh, credit card. Okay. And, uh, but it's a great way to um, give at During the time the season, of the year right. and you know and something that a lot of people don't think about is uh, the Christmas season when we think about it we think about the birth of Christ but a lot of times I don't think we put a lot of thought into what that birth really meant for Joseph and Mary uh, it is actually the most famous unplanned pregnancy that has ever been <laughs> right. I know it was planned by God but I can tell you Mary and Joseph ready? that was not they their plan that, no. and, um, and and when you think about things like that uh, what they went through the shame 
um, and the, the name calling that had to have happened at sure. that time in society. Uh, I think it helps us to be a little bit more compassionate toward those that are coming through our doors, uh, seeking refuge mm -hmm. from that and seeking someone that is telling them the truth that God has a plan right. and it's a good one and, um, and that their children are a blessing. We're told that the fruit of the womb is a blessing and children are a heritage from the Lord. And you know what's so weird about that is there's not a lot said about that in the right. Bible. And you have to wonder, it's kind of like if you think, I always put myself, I empathize, put myself in that position. I thought if I was back in those days, I mm -hmm. know, sad as it sounds, I would have been the Doubting Thomas kind of guy. I have to see it to believe yeah. it. So if you were that person that Mary came to and said, listen, I'm going to have a baby, mm -hmm. but I haven't been with anybody. And, it, you know, you'd be like, yeah, right. right. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah. how, you know, but for that, and, and of course, I know you, you get folks in there all the time that they're, they're not planned. Even some, I guess, maybe where they, okay, let me back up to say this. You have a lot that aren't planned. Do you have any that have a planned pregnancy, but still have, when it happens, it's like the dog catching the bumper, and now they don't know what to do. And oh, they come absolutely. To you. We have people all the time that are excited and terrified all at the same time. Yeah, right. uh, we have those that too, it's a planned pregnancy and then something goes awry afterwards. Maybe there's a job loss, a layoff, right. um, unexpected bills, something that comes up that um, takes what was a very um, exciting situation mm -hmm. and, and, and it doesn't mean that it necessarily detracts from the excitement of the pregnancy, right. but it does bring about a lot of other worries and cares along with that. Um, and, and we do have people that, you know, they were trying and they're excited and at the same time, I don't know how to be a mom. I've never been a mom or I don't know how to be a dad. And that's where we step in and step up alongside them and help provide education and mentorship so that they feel a little bit more prepared. Um, you know, I've had four children and I don't think even after having four kids, when I got to my fourth, I was prepared for that fourth one. Right. Um, but you can be more prepared and also have that sense of it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. right. Eventually it's going to quit crying and it has to sleep. Right. <laughs> right. Eventually. So I can. That's right. Eventually you'll quit crying right. and get to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 things do get better. They do. They do. Mm -hmm. You know. And the mistakes you make with the first ones is that you can't oh. wait to get through all of that. You know, oh, you yes. want to hurry up. They yes. want to hurry up and walk. Hurry up and talk, and you don't realize. Mm -hmm. They won't ever shut up and they don't ever sit down. Oh, <laughs> they absolutely. Start going. So with the second one, you're like, no, 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 don't. You don't want to yeah. stand up. Don't sit. Just sit. Well, it was so funny. We, we were eating at a local restaurant here the other day, and there was a little two year old maybe that just started walking. And the group uh, that was, they were, she was in the table eating with, I guess, the grandparents and parents. It was a Everybody took a turn in right. walking her around the restaurant right. because she just <laughs> wanted to walk, and uh -huh. they just followed and they her were around. They to have a good time. You know, they were yes. yeah. taking a long time over their meal. It wasn't, mm -hmm. one, and it wasn't one of those kid friendlies like CC's Pizza to where it doesn't right. matter. Now right. this was a, a nicer place, but it was so cute. She was just a tiny thing, but she was still on. But you could tell that they, so they would take turns. She would see yeah. them coming around. Our so first one walked at seven months months, three weeks. Oh my goodness. Um, and she was just very advanced, but she was the first grandchild. And so she was doted on and people were, you know, helped right. her stand up and helped her walk and everything else. And I am not kidding with the other ones. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> don't do that. You know, things do change. Uh, things like, you know, if you drop a pacifier the first one, you go and you take it, and you put it in the boiling water and everything. <laughs> You get to the second yeah, one, you run it under the, the you yeah. know, faucet, you get to the third one, you grab a wipey, you get to the fourth one, you go, That's here right. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Five second rule, here you go, honey, don't worry about it. Don't worry it's about a little muddy, it'll be all right. Yeah, that's right. Eat some dirt, keep those meat yeah. You know, but that's a lot of um, what we're there to do, too, mm -hmm. is share some of our practical experience right. that um, sometimes you're going to feel inadequate, and guess what you are, and that's okay. Right. Um, but often, as parents, we are actually more adequate than what we feel. Our children are just looking for love. Our children just need to be affirmed that mom and dad are there for them. And, uh, you know, I can look back and I have all these regret regrets. And I wish I'd done this and I wish I'd done that. And yet I have four great kids. Right. I've got four kids that love us dearly. And I think part of the, um, the best part um, and the greatest blessing in their lives is that we've been there. 
Right. It's been a constant, and I think that that's what they're looking for. Right. And I think sometimes our clients just need to know that, that you don't have to have it all figured out. You mm -hmm. don't have to have everything perfect. You don't have to even have all the the brand newest, because no, they're no. always coming out with something new. Mm -hmm. um, I was at a baby shower Thanksgiving Day. I have a cousin uh, that's going to be having um, a baby uh, this month. And we're sitting there, and there's these new toys and stuff. And I have another cousin that had twins. Uh, they're now nine. And Shannon looked at me, and she said, man, is it just me or is the baby stuff getting cooler? And that's just been in the nine years. Right. You know? And, um, you know, and, and the thing is, though, is we have some cool things at New Hope, and we right. have some great things. And a lot of uh, what we feel as parents is, and I think it's because uh, we live in a very materialistic society, sure. is we have to give our children everything. You know what? Mm. My first one got everything because she was the, new, the firstborn. Right. My six-year-old is now still wearing some of the hand-me-downs from my 17-year-old. Oh. And she is still, per actually, I think, in some ways, better balanced mm -hmm. right. uh, because she didn't get everything brand new. Right. And, uh, you know, there's just so much that we have the opportunity to sit down with the mothers and the fathers that come through there to encourage them. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of giving them a pat on the back. Sometimes it's uh, pointing them in a direction for them to be able to find help mm -hmm. that we don't necessarily offer in the office. Uh, but it is just so exciting to do what we do. And it's exciting to see their lives um, it getting better. Mm -hmm. right. It's exciting when they tell us that their lives have gotten better and then it's exciting when we have an experience like we have uh, this week where we have someone that has just accepted Christ. Oh, that's right. wonderful. And, uh, and, and she'll never be the same. Mm -hmm. And you know that's going to make her the, a much better mother. Yes. Right. You know? And um, it, it's a great ministry. It's a, a honor and a joy yeah. to be involved in it. Um, I know every time I'm on here, you always talk about how passionate I am and how excited right. I am. Uh, I can't imagine anything in my ministry that isn't worth being passionate about. Right. right. Absolutely. I mean, it is absolutely awesome. And we get to see miracles. And, you know, people all the time go, oh, I'd love to see miracles like that. Come get involved at New Hope. Right. Mm -hmm. And, guys, we want to we want to thank Tracy for coming. She comes every month to give us an update on what's going on at New Hope. And she is so passionate. And there are so many programs. And so remember them this year. Yes. This is the time of giving. This is, a, this is not, I mean, there are so many causes out there. There are lots mm -hmm. of, of worthy and wonderful causes. And, you know, yes, divvy it all up. But don't forget about New Hope yes. because this is, this is uh, honoring life, you know, um, of, of a new child. It's this investing also, in our future, it's too. It's investing yes. in our future. This is, you know, people in crisis do not make good decisions, you know, you, you just don't. And this is a place that they can go and take a breath and they won't be judged and that there is a program offered to them. Not, not only that, but they also offer um, counseling now for and, and classes for the, the guys that yes. there are men coming in and they are yes. mentoring those fathers to be because it's not just us guys and you know that's what I was laughing when Joe was saying that you don't read about a whole lot about in the Bible about how hard that was well it's because it was written by men if it was written by women all the gospels would have said the reason why is because women didn't know attack. how to write back then <laughs> when, the, when the stick turned pink or whatever it yeah. does <laughs> they didn't have those back then but, but I mean you know we would have written full chapters oh on that yes whole if you knew how to write all the emotions <laughs> if we yes. knew how to write <laughs> but anyway I, that's what, I, I laughed about that I thought no you know because they that, that wasn't it, but anyway, um, this is a great time of year that you can be a supporter and that you can go to their website, give anyway, or they, they'll take stuff too. They need diapers, they yes, need formula, diapers they especially. need all kinds of yes, stuff. Always. So if you, when, you're, when you're wrapping your gifts or you're giving your gifts, do not forget New Hope. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you, you for having so me. We appreciate it. Always. It's always a joy, and she is so passionate. It's always a joy, and I look forward to hearing it. <laughs> and she makes, she makes, because she is so nice and so kind and so sweet all the time, we feel kind of guilty feeling so pushed so hard for Auburn. So. I know, but that's, sorry. this soon will pass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you ever watch me watch football, you wouldn't feel that guilty. Uh, okay. we, right. we don't invite people to our house. We don't either. We don't invite people because I don't necessarily want other people to see me in football. Mode. Right, Joe. Um, and, and I am very totally. passionate about that too. So yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I know how hard <laughs> this is didn't for get you. To sleep until it, like you three know three or four o'clock on Sunday yeah. morning after after the loss. So it was just depressing. Yes. <laughs> and, and 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 seriously, I, we we I totally we feel that. Pain. Yeah, oh, yeah, we did. I feel that as a, as a dolphin fan right. a lot of times, and I don't mm -hmm. want people to see me because they would not think I was. 
very nice. Well, <laughs> even if it was a great game, I, I, it's just, to be honest, the emotions are, raw, are more raw, and my husband and I are just so passionate about it. Mm. Um, and I think that, you know, you're just so excited and you're so exposed. And so I can remember one time one of my children was um, sort of doing a play-by-play -play of what we were saying during the game and putting it on Facebook. Right. And I was like, Ooh, stop that. Yeah, don't. I know. Um, you know. <laughs> Mom, I've never seen you like that. I know. You better stop it. Okay. We're well. going to commercial break, you guys. Don't forget new hope for your Christmas giving at all. Thank you. Yes. We'll be back in just a few. Yeah, I know that is so Town cool. Americana, where trucks are big and bold, and a handshake is firm, and your word is gold. Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens is a $2,000 drive. Maybe you're coming from here or here. Doesn't matter. Buying a truck from Don Lefford in Athens will save you at least $2,000. Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens, a $2,000 drive worth making. I'll take that drive every time. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. Are you having trouble filing for disability? Seems no one is concerned about your pain, the waiting, the denials. While some representatives will meet with you in court, we will meet with you now to discuss your plan. We'll review with you the same file that the judges will see. Call us now, Social Security Law Center at Logan Thompson. You're entitled to better. This segment of Tennessee Valley This Morning is brought to you by Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland and 2120 Chapman Road, Chattanooga. For your next new or previously owned vehicle, make it Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, the better way to buy. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning on WTMB. Joe and Kim Palo now joined by James Kilgore and Steve Poteet of Spirit Horses Therapeutic Riding Center. Uh, first of all, gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us again, Jimmy. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, real quick, first of all, we want to tell you that Jimmy's got the brand new edition. James. I call him Jimmy. I know Jimmy for a long time. Uh, it's got the brand new edition of the uh, Crier, the, the newspaper that Jimmy puts together each and every month. The special uh, holiday edition, the Christmas edition is out now and bigger and better than ever. Got some nice color photos in there and uh, does a wonderful job. And of course, does a wonderful job here at Cleveland State in uh, videoing the basketball games and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for being here with us again. And you brought Steve Poteet. And Steve is with, as we said, Spirit Horse Therapeutic Riding, uh, Rider Stable uh, Center, I should say. Steve, and tell us a little bit about what you do and exactly uh, the, the ministry that you have. There is a about lot. About the horses being right. able to, to be a, a very therapeutic or, or to connect with some people that have autism or have, have mental challenges or even physical at times. So tell us a little bit about what you do and, and, uh, That's and where correct. you do it at. That's correct. First of all, thank you for allowing us to come on yes, today. Sir. Thanks, James, for sharing your time with me here today. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, James and I have become good friends and all that he's involved in. And one of the things that he did was he came to the Black Foster Question Center and did some interviews that put us in the mm -hmm. uh, crier as well. 
And so um, we're thankful for that. But the Spear Horse at Black Fox is therapeutic riding for special needs children. We uh, uh, do that in one hour private lessons. Uh, we do that by teaching them the English discipline of riding. It's targeted equine assisted health care in that we take them through a 78 step program that challenges their disabilities. They move through the program at their own pace if that takes a year or 10 years or a lifetime and they go to the next step when they've mastered the first. Okay. And uh, we do all of that totally free of charge on the back of a horse. Wow. wow. That's amazing. I've, I've seen um, and have, have participated in a couple of these programs, and it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I know a lot of people are, are concerned about the safety. Mm -hmm. However, however, it seems like there are special, you know, especially if there's some physical challenges there, there are special ways that, that the, the kids or the individuals are, that, that are, they're mounted on these horses that make it a safer yes. way to ride. Right. Well, actually, not in the Spirit Horse Program. Okay. The Spirit Horse Program, they're taught to ride in an English saddle. Okay. And if you can ride English, you can ride. Okay. And so some of these children actually become very good riders because wow. they're, they're more focused than no their, their now, peers. Now, the English saddle, the one without the horn? How is the English, the English saddle, saddle without the horn? Okay, yes. okay, okay. And so there, if you can, you, you know, if you want to build confidence in a child, right. uh, teach them how to move a 600-pound horse. Sure, no, no kidding. kidding. And uh, then do that in an English saddle, and it really boosts their confidence. Now, safety for safety concerns, we do have the certified instructor at the head of the horse. Right. We require one of the par parents to participate as a sidewalker to their physical ability to do that, right. and then we have volunteers. Uh, many from Lee University, including the state, who have mm -hmm. come and volunteered as sidewalkers, and so we have someone at the ankle of the child oh, uh, okay. for safety reasons. And then these are, uh, we use Ponies of America that are bred specifically for children. They're a more docile animal than your typical full-size horse. Wow. They're 14 hands and under. And then they are either existing or retired show ponies. Oh, wow. So they've been yeah. through rigorous training. Not every show pony will become a spirit horse. Sure. But um, the, the safety is, a, is certainly something that we're aware of. But it is a very controlled situation. And that's why the spirit horse therapy isn't in group sessions. We, we it's you know, just one on one. It's, okay. Yes, that, it's the one on I've one. Seen private. That I've been a part of. It was there was a group of people at one time, several. So this is just particularly one on one, and you do have the parent there, and then you have a certified person at the head of the horse. And these ponies are 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 really eager to to really kind of serve in a sense to to these kids. Do you have some success stories of things that have happened? Yes, we do. Uh, uh, well, of course, <laughs> at the Spirit Horse Center in Dallas, Texas, where Spirit Horse began in 2002, they see over 450 students a month. Wow. And have seen wow. so, something like 65 speak their first words after being oh, on the man. pony. Uh, something like 45 uh, sit up for the first time. And then the children are asked to go get their pony. Even if they're in a wheelchair, they're led and they led, lead their pony back to be tacked up and they go through the motion of tacking up the pony. Uh, one uh, child that we had who had um, a hole in his heart, he had a weaker side, so the instructors had him brush a little bit more on his left side wow. to kind of strengthen that. And so when he began to ride, he couldn't sit up in, in the saddle, but after riding a few sessions, he was able to sit up without someone holding his back. And then we have um, the, uh, the Spirit Horse program has been proven through two major university studies to be especially beneficial to children with autism. Right. And so we have at the Black Fox Equestrian Center uh, some students who ride who have uh, Asperger's. Okay. And um, they have done really well with that. It becomes their world yeah. uh, because they can achieve great things in that. And we've seen test scores go up. Uh, one mother came in very excited, t saying that her t the test score for her 11-year-old had gone up for the first time. They'd always flatlined, but they went up double digits in two categories wow. and single digits in another. And then that same young man, who is now 14, he's been riding at Spirit Horse for five semesters, or about two and a half years. Um, he, I, I saw him this year. Now, remember, he couldn't ride when he first started. Right. This year, I went back to the arena during the fall semester and saw Noah riding one of our show ponies in an English saddle at a trot at a two-point stance that's standing up in the stirrup at a trot right. completely around the arena. That's wow. Amazing. That many, is amazing. many of his peers in school could not do that. 
No, and that is amazing. No, it is amazing, and the pride that comes with that and the accomplishment is just amazing. Yeah. And it is amazing. There's a lot of, and, you know, and I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, you hear so many stories, and there's so many things out there, but there does seem to be that, that bond between the ponies and the individuals that somehow or another it just instills in them. Now, do they have the same pony every time, or do they work with different ponies? Well, we, we, especially children with the autism want to be consistent and have yeah, that familiar right. thing and so they we try to keep them on the same okay. pony but Noah actually graduated from one show pony to another oh, and wow. was riding at a trot only a different pony than he began wow. with and so that's just major that is major just accomplishments the change, you know in, in, in at all it, it, to, to do that and to accept that it's yeah. the it's except change that easily yeah. is amazing it's great. itself. Well, the uh, thing I was going to mention too, Steve, is I think what f folks need to know, it, this is called Spirit Horses Therapeutic Ride. These aren't spirited horses, so to speak, <laughs> because <laughs> I do know a spirited side. horse is not one you maybe want to just jump on and start riding, <laughs> but that they're very docile, as you said, very calm, good-natured horses, so that these young riders, I think, of course, horses, as much as I've heard, uh, my brother-in-law used to have horses, right? and he used to say, horses are the dumbest animals in the mm -hmm. world, but I don't believe that. I believe that they, they kind of sense, and it may be that animal sense, but they sense that they have somebody maybe a little bit more fragile on their back than is normal, uh, especially if they're used to riding, I think. Mm -hmm. Or having somebody ride them, so they are very docile horses. Though they're not any spirited, wild type of you know right. they're going to take off running or anything like that. Right, they're they're very trained horses. My daughter trains all of our horses at the Black Posse Equestrian Center, and so they have been trained by her. Actually, gentle, you know, horses yes. aren't broke anymore by a, a, a right. bucking cowboy. Yes, right. they're, they're they're gentled, right. and so they're trained, and then they're used in the show arena for our show teams. We have children, uh, typical children who come and ride and pay to ride in the programs and we have show teams and so the horses have that experience and yeah. like I said not every show pony can become a spirit horse because it is a certain type of temperament right. but yes you're absolutely right they can sense uh, who is on their their back but a horse can also sense whether uh, any rider is is scared or upset yeah. or you know afraid a horse can sense that Right. And so the horse senses that the child has disabilities and is dealing with that, and um, and of course we always have the certified instructor there that now, conveys James, that to. Did you get to? Did you get to get when you went out for the interview? Did you did you get close to the horses? Oh yes. Did I you sure were, did. were they very? Did you enjoy that? Oh yes. Have you have you done any other riding out there? I think uh, Ernest told me that you weren't part of the program, but I didn't know if you had ever ridden before. No, I haven't been ridden before. Oh, well, maybe we'll have to get you on a Yeah, we have to get day. you out there and get you riding around. That's right. You may we'll be the next the Lone Ranger. <laughs> well, James has certainly been a champion of Spirit Horse since he came to the, to the, to the barn there to do the interview right, right. and took some pictures of, of the horses, and, and uh, he talks about it a lot and right. has invited us here today. So he's, he's definitely a friend of Spirit Horse yes, and, the, and the children who ride there. Yes, That's he, terrific. He Facebooked me right away and told me that he had interviewed and he wanted to bring you on the program with him. We just happened to have a cancellation at the last minute. It was going to be after the first of the year, but thank you for coming. Now, yes. if someone wants to get involved in your program, whether to volunteer, um, there are services you know, out there to, to work with these, the students and the horses, or if they want to become a part of the program, if they have a child, is there an age or a size or, you know, limit? I'm not really sure how you would do that, or a right. cognitive you know, limit. What, what exactly does it require? Well, for volunteering, we require them to be 18, <laughs> 18 years right. of, of age. age, yeah, to volunteer, and then we have we do have a number of uh, Lee University students that have come and right. done some volunteer work. And uh, they simply go to the website, spirithorsetn.org, and there's a, a volunteer application as well as a client application for, we do uh, require the, our clients to, there is no charge for Spirit Horse, but we require them to fill out an application and they actually ride under a doctor's prescription oh, or okay. doctor's care. Okay. And so we have to get that back in. And then the, um, uh, if, if, if an adult comes to, to volunteer, they would download the application and fill that out. But we also require 
an adult to pay for a background check sure. yeah. on them. If you know if they're associated with the college, we know about them. But if if it's some uh, if it's an adult that wants to come volunteer, we require sure. them to pay for a background okay. check. So that, because they're going to be working around children. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Right. Now, is there a phone number if somebody's interested in, in either uh, becoming a, a volunteer or maybe getting someone that they know their child whatever involved? Sure. Our director is Darlene, and her number is four two three five zero five. Two two one five. Okay. And then, of course, the face of the uh, we're on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Spirit Horse T N, and then the website SpiritHorseTN.org. So that's Terrific. Spirit Horse T N, and then you've got the dot org or just on Facebook. Well, James, we thank you for yeah, buddy. Thank Steven you so much. Here. Now, tell us about your you. You, you got some new equipment. I think that um, that Ernest was telling us about for the for the CDs. Uh, yes. Okay. What what happens if somebody has what? If oh, they have albums. some albums. Or um, uh, old records, or the mega wanted to transfer to CD. Okay. And old cassettes, and they wanted to record them to CDs. They put them to the computer. And you are able to do that now. Yes. Terrific, All right, man. Yes. Not only that, but he does have the crier that he puts out once a month. The, the December issue has just come out. It's about hot off the presses. The new one mm -hmm. is over there, Joe. It's color. It's in color. It's, it's in Christmas color. The Christmas one. Yeah. Nook. We'll let like you see that. that. And so that one, they have just redone. What you had? You got your computer all upgraded and your printer and everything upgraded. And so you're going to be putting out just uh, uh, this. Great little magazine that you guys want to pick up. We'll have them here at the college if you want to come back. Where are some of the places they can get them, James? Um, the Cleveland State Community College Library, Lee's Youth Bits and Media Center, and um, also at the um, Cleveland State um, Vista Center, and um, some Cowboy Church here in Cleveland Cowboy oh, wow. okay. Church. Okay. And also, um, um, let's see. Um, Dollar General and um, and um, United Grocery Outlet and Habitat for Humanity Restore, Grove Avenue and North Lee Highway, and um, and that's about it. That's Man, about that's it. and and I'll tell you, if you would like an ad, very inexpensive. If you like an ad in this paper or would like more information. Uh, first of all, you can go to a Gmail. You can email them at foothillscrier, at foothillscrier, all one word, at gmail.com, or give them a call, 423-284-4026. That's 284-4026, and you can get an ad in this paper, find out more about the paper, maybe get an article in there. But uh, we do appreciate you, Jamie, for bringing this and for bringing Stephen on That's as well. Right. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful you. work yes, that sir. you guys do. And if you, if you don't know, if you do have a special needs child or you know someone that does, this is a program that, that yeah. is, that it, it's tried and true. I mean, yeah. it, came, it kind of came slowly out there, but um, there have been amazing results, and it is something that, that instills a sense of pride and accomplishment and a, and a oneness almost with, with the animal. The animal can sometimes do much more than any of us, and all, but we try a whole lot. Maybe I can get Joe on the back yeah. of one of them. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. All right, folks. Thank you guys for being with us. Thank we so appreciate much. it. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll be back with more Tennessee Valley this morning. Ron Moore on the way when we return after this. Stay tuned. Town Americana, where trucks are big and bold, and a handshake is firm, and your word is gold. Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens is a $2,000 drive. Maybe you're coming from here or here. Doesn't matter. Buying a truck from Don Lefford in Athens will save you at least $2,000. Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens, a $2,000 drive worth making. I'll take that drive every time. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. 
Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. Are you having trouble filing for disability? Seems no one is concerned about your pain, the waiting, the denials. While some representatives will meet with you in court, we will meet with you now to discuss your plan. We'll review with you the same file that the judges will see. Call us now, Social Security Law Center at Logan Thompson. You're entitled to better. This segment of Tennessee Valley This Morning is brought to you by Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland and 2120 Chapman Road, Chattanooga. For your next new or previously owned vehicle, make it Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, the better way to buy. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning. Joe and Kim Palo now joined by Ron Moore. It says local historian, but we can also put good friend. Uh, sometimes, you know, is, um, no, no, not Pizza anything. Eater Supreme. Pizza Eater, Pizza Eater Supreme, Pizza Supreme is a good Eater. thing. But, but anyway, Ron is here with us uh, today, and we thank you for being on with us as always. Mm -hmm. What's our history about today? We could talk about Auburn, Alabama with history of that. We could talk about our big game with Cleveland that yeah, we had Friday but, night with. Uh, but we got to talk Those history. Are, if you're an Alabama fan, that was disappointing. If you're a Cleveland fan, it was disappointing. Yes, so, it was. Yes. So oh, well, <laughs> I want to talk about the importance of the railroads that come through here, but a little bit differently is, you know, Abraham Lincoln said that uh, the importance of the railroad here in Cleveland was important, as important as Richmond of winning the war. Right. Uh, so, but the railroad brought plenty of jobs here. Uh, it uh, brought all kind of ability to ship our products out particularly copper, yep. uh, large to that, but it also brought five presidents to Cleveland, Tennessee, and it brought two first ladies and a couple other guys who ran for president. And a partridge in a pear tree. Right. Uh, <laughs> Rutherford Hayes came in September 1877. He stopped in wow. Cleveland for two minutes. Two minutes. Right. And he got out and spoke to the crowd at the rear of the train. Okay. So, now, none of these presidents stayed there long. Uh, well, Rover Cleveland came on October 21st, 1877. 87 and arrived in Cleveland at 11:55 p.m. Still, four or five hundred people showed up to see him, and a lot of people were mad because they didn't know he was coming. But he got out off the train and actually shook hands uh -huh. for a wow. few minutes while they made their stop there, proceeded back on the train and left. You know, Cleveland was never the destination. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt stopped in Cleveland on Monday, September 8, 1902, around 2:30, and 2,000 people heard him give a quick speech, uh, and he spoke about the history of Tennessee, its peace, and its involvement in the war. And then he came back and returned in October 22nd, 1907, during his second term. Mm -hmm. Then it went a while. Taft came through as a candidate, and later he got elected, came back to Cleveland November 16th, 1994. Once again, stopped, hello, goodbye type thing. 1934, not 1994. Huh? 34. 1934. What did, yeah. what did I say? 94. 94. Okay. That's, yeah. That's all right. He was, he was older. Then. He was older. Right. Yeah. He still came back. He came back, but it was... Uh, then FDR came through here the most. Okay. He was here three times. Mercy. Twice in one day. Wow, no kidding. So uh, uh, the first time he came through here, uh, uh, about 50 people came and saw him there. It basically was at the, at the station, and it, as the train slowed down, through the Cleveland station, he was standing there waving at people. Uh, but he went to uh, uh, dedicate the Norris Dam, one of the, is the first dam built by TVA, not the first, okay. not the oldest dam in Tennessee, but the uh, the first dam built by TVA. This was important because of the war process going on, that you, the power to run Oak Ridge mm -hmm. and uh, the aluminum plants to build the airplanes and different things. So that was important. The second time he came back. He came, he went through Cleveland to 
dedicate Chickamauga Dam. And there's great pictures of him dedicating that. Once again, more electricity for the war era. And he left there, came right back through Cleveland, and went up into the Smoky Mountains and dedicated the Newfoundland Gap and the opening of the Great Smoky Mountains. Oh, okay. So he was here a couple of times, and, uh, you know, that was just uh, quick, quick visits by the president. And uh, we had a couple other people came through, uh, some first ladies who were on the plane, uh, train. But that's unique and, to have that many presidents. Yeah, stop well, see, the railroad was, was involved in it. Right, it right. And, of course, right after that, we didn't have any more presidents actually didn't ride the train right. like they did now. There's some, there's some presidents who rode trains through here. We wouldn't have any earlier presidents because we didn't get the railroad until 1853. Mm. Okay. So, you know, the, those first 1700s on up through there, we didn't have any of those. Then we had a few that rode through here. And like I say, the railroad was important to us at that time. And uh, the railroad still travels through this Cleveland, but we don't have a stop here anymore. Uh, we do have a depot that has some management, the freight mm -hmm. switching and things like that. And you know what? It's so so funny is, you know, we've lived in different areas of Bradley County since we've lived here. It doesn't matter what area of Bradley County you live at, you will hear that train. You hear the oh, yeah. train when it comes through. You hear the whistle. It could be close or it could be far far away, but you're going to hear that that train whistle. But yeah, and, and I guess it's it, 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 back in the day, the train. Uh, the railroad was the way to go. Of course, mm -hmm. now, of course, you know, they got Air Force One, and he's not going to ever fly into the Cleveland airport, although, <laughs> you know, we maybe. Had a lot of passenger trains, too, you know, and the soldiers left. You know, there's still people yeah. alive here that remember the soldiers leading from the, uh, that, and the soldiers would throw letters out and ask them to mail them for them. Right. To, you, know, to, you know, to their families wow, and things. Okay. Because they were, they were so, they were traveling, you know, and during the Civil War, of course, they, they traveled, the troops, the train was very important. And then later on, you know, down in the uh, McDonald area, we had all these springs and resorts yeah. down there, seven resorts, I believe, at one time. And they had uh, the uh, Tucker Springs Resort down there, and they had a stop there. People would go up on Tucker Springs and drink the water. Uh, Mineral Park had seven different types of water and, and within 100 feet of each other. That's amazing. Oh, it is. Yeah, yes. I, you brought the strip. Now, I could not get him to drink you that. Couldn't get him to drink that water. I couldn't get him no. to drink that water. I, th I thought it was some real stuff there. I came real close until he told me where he got it from. trains, Cleveland ran into a train the other night. The Cleveland Blue Raiders ran into a train. Boy, they the did. Yeah, they did. That was one of the most impressive, Rebel train. Uh, impressive high school teams I've saw in a couple of years. I haven't seen Maryville in yeah. the last couple of years, but uh, Maryville's the only team that beat them. Yeah, and right. defensively, man, they were oh, a they strong were, powerhouse. If they hit you, you were tackled. There wasn't any... You weren't no, going to break no any arm, arm tackling, tackling around no. there. That was, that and was we, we were glad to have Arnold Tarpley with us. His yes. First, his first television. Arnold did a great job, he, by the he's way. He's been what on radio for nice a couple guy. years now, but that was his first television. His Wonderful television man, too. Yeah. A really, really nice guy, those yeah. of you that know Well, Arnold. are you glad Football Friday's over? Yes and no. Yeah, it's bittersweet. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, you know, particularly I have to get up early the next morning and go do right. a radio show. show. So right. that does get, and then I eat pizza late. Right. Thanks to you guys bringing pizza in and. Yeah, my stomach's full, and I'm laying there going, oh, Lord, no, i got to get up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we have a lot of fun. You know, Jason Hillebrand and Scott Webb and Adam and Dusted. Mo and Dustin uh, and Mitchell and all that. We just yeah. have a great time. We have more fun back in the control room than they ever do on the set. Though. Oh, you, if you have, well, Kim knows, but if those of you ever knew what goes on back in the control room, it's, it's, it's not pretty. Yeah, I got lucky though. I mean, and not that I mean, I had a great time with you guys. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it's a lot of fun and back there and being the only female, you know. Of course, you know, it's it's always a lot of fun. But after a few weeks, it was like I don't need to be here, and I got peace and quiet. And so Joe would leave to go do the ball games about four o'clock in the afternoon, four thirty, and I didn't see him again until about one thirty in the morning. And so I hate it's over. <laughs> well, the the set, uh, you know, we've come out of uh, Walker Valley on their setup there, which is unbelievable Beautiful. production some facilities. Mitchell done our highlights this yes, year. Yes, and did a great and job. Just re really, the best we've ever had yeah, highlights. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, the fastest. Yeah, I mean, he puts them together and adds some music to it, and we, and we get to watch them and enjoy them. And, yeah, uh, incredible. Also, so it's been very good. You know. Yeah, it, and it's, it is bittersweet, and but and hey, we got doing, next year. Now you're going to do basketball and wrestling. With yeah, you. and we're going to try forward. to put together a little yeah. show for that, so we'll see what happens there as we come down the road. Right. It's we right. want to thank Ron, of course, for being with it's us right. as he is each and every Wednesday. Of course, we want to thank Tracy Shellhouse and Jimmy Kilgore and Stephen Poteet for being with us as well, and we thank you for joining us here on Tennessee Valley this morning. Have yourself a good rest of the week. We'll see you next time. Don't forget, tomorrow's my birthday. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Tennessee Valley this morning. Have a good one.